This is a photograph of the proudest day of my professional life. It's the day that I was sworn in as a Lord of Appeal in Ordinary, the first and regrettably the only woman ever to have had that post. Now, this jolly pair are in fact the current president and deputy president of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, but it's when we were still in the House of Lords, and I believe that it will have been on the day when we gave our last judgments. It was a, an amazing farce. Nobody knew what on earth had been decided or why. They had to read the judgments in order to find out. We do things completely differently in the Supreme Court, and it's one of the benefits of the move. But that's a happy recollection. I grew up in a village in North Yorkshire where my father was headmaster of a small boys boarding school and my mother, who was a qualified teacher, uh, ran the boarding house. But it was wonderful that she was a qualified teacher because when my father died very suddenly, uh, when I was 13, uh, she sort of picked herself up, dusted off her teaching qualifications and uh, became headmistress of the village primary school. Again, looking back on it, what a wonderful role model she was. It was taken for granted that we would go to university, although at that stage only five or six percent of the population went to university, preferably Oxford or Cambridge, because my father had gone to Oxford and my mother's father had gone to Cambridge, so it was a bit of a battle at um, boat race days. Um, but they gave us this amazing um, faith in ourselves and confidence in education. My headmistress did think that I stood a reasonable chance of getting into Oxford or Cambridge. My best subject at school was history, but she was a historian. And she said to me, well, Brenda, I think you ought to be going to Oxford or Cambridge, but I don't think you're a natural historian. Should we try and find something else for you to study? And she said, what about economics? I said, no, I don't fancy the idea of economics, but what about law? And instead of saying, nonsense, girl, girls don't do law, or they only do law if law's in their family, or we don't know anything about law here and we don't like to encourage people to do things we know nothing about. I'm not sure she knew anything about economics, but that's by the way. Uh, she said, oh, what a good idea. We can't help you in any way, but you know, it sounds like a good idea. And as it turned out, it was a very good idea. There were three women's colleges and 21 men's colleges. So I think the women all felt, almost all felt, a deep sense of privilege that we were in this wonderful place, getting this amazing education. Whereas some of the men undoubtedly felt that it was their right to be there. They were the ones you wanted to punch in the face, but um, uh, didn't, of course. I think it was only later that one realised it was a built-in quota which discriminated against women. And of course it was wonderful to be there when the uh, undergraduate sex ratio was so very favourable as far as we were concerned, so we could all have a jolly good time if we wanted to. And we did. Mm -hmm.